All right, cool. But first and foremost, I want to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's who the world only calls Jesus Christ. I'm Shatar Tabaka Award. I'm Shatar Kodash, Ariyah. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. Man, we back at it, man. Another Sakari Soul Food Saturday, man. All praises to the Most High. All praises to the Most High, man. So what the title says is Vladimir Putin proves the Negroes are the real Jews, man. And basically, I got a video that shows these things because Vladimir Putin has what revealed the black Russian icons, right? Over there in Russia, these paintings, these um, images that shows what black Jesus, the Jews are black, all these things, man. So before we watch, actually get into it, because it's this YouTube channel called Black Journals. And what they do is like little exposés of what black people do did or doing throughout the annals of time and they did something on the black jews all right and it's all pertaining to what vladimir putin got going on right over there in russia like but before we get into the video man let me get revelations 12 and 10. but shout out to the chat man shout out to the chat man how everybody doing out there also like share and subscribe Like, share, and subscribe, right? All right. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 10. Mm -hmm. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation. It says what? Now is come salvation uh -huh. and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Uh-huh. So this is dealing with end times, right? Salvation, right? Go ahead. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. So the people who get salvation overcome them by the blood of the lamb, right? Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. Uh-huh. And they love not their lives unto death. And they love not their lives unto death, meaning they was willing to die for what they believe, right? Go ahead. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Uh-huh. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. So it's woe, right? Destruction to these people, right? Go ahead. For the devil has come down unto you. It says what? For the devil has come down unto you. And the devil right here is what? The white man. The devil has come down unto you, right? Go ahead. Having great wrath. He's mad as hell, right? Go ahead. Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. They know with everything going on in this society, they have a short time to rule. We see all these things, right? And what's most importantly is happening, the children of Israel, Black, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indians are waking up, right? So they know they have a short time to rule, right? Go ahead. And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman, uh -huh. which brought forth the man-child. So who's the dragon? The dragon would be these white people, right? Who's the woman? It is the children of Israel, right? Go ahead. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Uh-huh. And, and it... Uh, Salakia, right? And it said, um, previous um, verse, right? It says the woman that brought forth the man child. The man child is who the world calls Jesus Christ, right? So, and it says the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, right? Go ahead. That she might fly into the wilderness. What is that dealing with? It meaning us getting kicked out of Israel in 70 AD and going into the wilderness. What is the wilderness? West Africa, right? Go ahead. Into her place. Uh huh. Where she is nourished for a time. Mm hmm. And times. And a half a time from the face of the serpent. Right. So it was the time where we didn't see the white people. We was in West Africa for a time and a time, and they didn't know who he was, right? All this is dealing with our salvation, us being kicked out of Israel, right? Let me get um Micah 4 and 10. It's the same thing that Michael 4 and 10 is saying, right? It gives us a timeline of what happens to the Israelites and what's going on, right? This is the book of Micah, chapter 4, and verse 10. Mm-hmm. Be in pain and mm -hmm. labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion, the children of Israel, right? Go ahead. Like a woman in travail. Uh huh. Like a woman giving birth, right? Go ahead. For now shalt thou go out, go forth out of the city. What's the city? Israel, right? You're going to get kicked out of Israel, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. And thou shalt dwell in the field. What is the field? West Africa. So it's giving us, it's showing you what happened to these Israelites, right? They get kicked out of 70 AD. They go into the wilderness. The wilderness is West Africa, right? Go ahead. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. And it says go where? Even to Babylon. Babylon is America. It says you're going to go to Babylon. So when you get into the book of Revelations and it start dealing with mystery Babylon, it's like, oh, 
like um well, yeah, finish that off right and you should go to babylon because we're going to get in revelation mystery babylon right go ahead there shall thou be delivered it says what there shall thou be delivered in babylon the children of israel is going to be delivered right go ahead there the lord shall redeem thee from the hands of thy enemy and there we get redeemed we get salvation that is what jesus christ is coming to do he's coming to save us from the hand of our enemies where in Babylon, right? So let's get Revelations. Wait, I want to say 17 and 5, right? Yeah, that's it. Revelation 17 and 5. This is the book of Revelation chapter 17, starting in verse 5. Mm -hmm. And upon her forehead was a name written. Uh-huh. Mystery. Babylon the Great. It says what? Mystery. Babylon the Great. So it's going to be a mystery. It's going to be a Babylon the Great in end times, right? And But it's going to be a mystery, right? Go ahead. The mother of harlots. It's the mother of harlots, right? What is a harlot? A whore. What is America? A whore, right? Go ahead. And abominations of the earth. And this is the what? And abominations of the earth. Because all the abominations of the earth is here in Babylon, which you have homosexuality. You have the... um. Defile food. Defile food. Go into it, bro. <laughs> All that. Right there, everything. Mixed fabrics. Everything that God considers an abomination is definitely forced on us here in America. Yeah, so it's the mystery Babylon that what? The Israelites are going to get saved from, right? So, um, all right, let me get um another one. Give me Luke 21 and 20. We're going to start at verse 20. Also, like, share, and subscribe, all right? Like, share, and subscribe. But this mystery Babylon that's in the last book of the Bible, that's where the Israelites are going to get saved at, right? This is the book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when ye shall see Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem, right? Go ahead. Compassed with armies. So what is this? This is Jesus Christ, right? Who the world only calls Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, right? He is prophesying of 70 AD, right? He's telling them when you see Jerusalem, Compassed of armies. Once you see these people surrounded by armies, right? The Roman armies, right? Go ahead. Then know that the desolation thereof is not. What is this? The abomination of desolation, right? They're about to destroy Israel, right? Go ahead. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. It's the same thing that Micah is saying, right? You flee into the mountain or you go to the wilderness, right? Go ahead. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Uh huh. And let not them. That are in the countries entered therein too. Go ahead. For these be the days of vengeance. This is the days of vengeance, right? This is when God has to avenge or get, or uh, we have to pay back God, right? Go ahead. That all things which are written may be fulfilled. He's finna destroy this place. This 70 AD, right? Go ahead. But woe unto them that are with the child. Yeah, it's gonna be a horrible time for a horrible day for you if you have a baby or a little kid, right? Go ahead. And to them that give suck mm -hmm. in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land uh -huh. and wrath upon the people. Wrath upon the Israelites, right? Go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. You're going to die, right? Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. This is slavery, right? This is, <laughs> he's talking about how we're going to go from um 70 AD into the wilderness, into all nations, right? It's the same thing, right? Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down. Of the Gentiles. Uh-huh. Meaning the Gentiles are going to destroy Israel, right? And they're going to occupy Israel, right? Go ahead. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. When do the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled? When Christ come back, when it's his second coming, right? But all of this is letting us know what we're going to be in Israel 70 AD. We're going to get kicked out. We're going to be um go to the wilderness and we're going to be led captives into all nations. During the process of all these things, you know what's going to happen? We're, we are going to lose our, our identity, right? So let's get 2 Thessalonians 2 and 1. This is the things that Paul warned us about. Us losing our identity. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 from the top. Mm -hmm. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and by our gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind. He's saying, man, don't get troubled, right? Go ahead. Or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, mm -hmm. nor by letter, as from us. As that, the day of Christ is at hand. Yeah, just letting them know. Bad things are going to happen, right? Go ahead. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. We are going to lose our identity. It's going to be a falling away. 
the Israelites are going to lose our our identity, right? Go ahead. And that man of sin be revealed. Who is the man of sin? The, the son of perdition. The son of perdition, the son of destruction, the white man, right? Is letting you know we're going to lose our identity. And then we're going to come back and we're going to reveal that the white man is the goddamn devil, right? Go ahead. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. What is he saying? The white man going to start saying that he's God, right? Go ahead. Or that is worship. Mm -hmm. That he as God sitteth in the temple of God, mm -hmm. showing himself that he is God. And that's what the white man does. What do you do? He goes around acting like he's goddamn God, right? Mm -hmm. So... But it's all these things we're going to, like, let me get Isaiah 25 and 7, right? But at end times, all lies are going to be revealed, right? God's going to show the truth. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. So it's a covering cast over all people. What it means is lies that's been spread across that all people believe, right? It's a covering cast above all people, right? Go ahead. And the veil that is spread over all nations. Yeah. And this veil is going to be revealed. We are going to start to see the truth. Why will we see the truth? Because the Most High will show it to us, right? That's what, Um. let's go back to Revelation, right? What was that in Revelation? Started on um, 12 and 15, right? Book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 15. Right? Because the Most High is going to de destroy all these lies, and he's going to reveal the truth. And this is what Revelation is still letting us know, right? Go ahead. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water what is as it? a flood after the woman. Right? So what is these waters? These waters are lies, right? The serpent is the white man. He's going to put out lies, right? Uh, could you read it again a little bit? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water mm -hmm. as a flood after the woman. After the woman. So he's going to put out lies after the woman. Who is the woman? The Israelites, right? Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. That we could be carried away by their lies. We would believe in their lies and we would be carried away, for lack of a better term, what? Through their bullshit. We would believe in their bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. So what is the earth? History. <laughs> Artifacts. This is the earth that's helping the woman, right? Go ahead. And the earth opened her mouth uh -huh. and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So what is it talking about? History is going to swallow up the white man's lies. You're going to be able to look into history. You're going to be able to look in the Bible and prove what he's saying is a lie, right? It's not going to line up. It's not going to match up. Exactly. exactly. Keep going. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Who's the dragon? It's still that same serpent, the white man. He's going to be mad at the woman, right? The Israelites. Go ahead. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which is us who are here at this time, right? Go ahead. Which keep the commandments of God. It says what? what? Which keep the commandments of God. Which shows you at the end times, the true Israelites, the ones who truly, truly believe in Jesus Christ, right? Are going to be keeping the commandments of God, right? Go ahead. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And they're going to believe in Jesus Christ. So what are we going to do? We have to understand that the Jews of antiquity, right? These are, the Israelites are black, right? All these people are black. Go ahead. Jeremiah 16, chapter chapter 16, verses 19 and 21. Mm -hmm. O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the end of the earth mm -hmm. and shall say, surely our fathers have inherited lives. And that's so crazy because that who the actual context in that it says surely we inherit in lies is actually talking about the Israelites. We are the ones who are inheriting lies, right? And we're all over everywhere, like damn man, they've been lying to us this whole time, right? Go ahead. And vanity and things when there is no profit. And there's no profit. Now we get the truth, right? Now we get the truth, right? And what is the truth? That God is black, his people is black, all these people are black, right? So let me let's prove that God is black, right? Um, let me get Revelation four and one. Four and one. Uh huh. We have to prove that these people, the Jews of antiquity, are black. How do we do it? God's black. <laughs> so when his children be black, right? The book of Revelations, chapter four, from the top. After this, I looked, mm -hmm. and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said, come up hither, mm -hmm. and I will show thee things which must 
be hereafter. So what he's saying, he heard a loud voice about, about the sound of a trumpet telling him, come up here, right? Go ahead. And immediately I was in the spirit. So and immediately he was in the spirit. Go ahead. And behold, a throne was set in heaven uh -huh. and one sat on that throne. So it's a throne in heaven and somebody sitting on the throne. That's God, right? Go ahead. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Uh huh. So let's look what a jasper and a sardine stone, right? Let's see what a jasper and a sardine stone look like. Because that's what they said God looks like. So let me look up Jasper and Sardine stone. You already got the picture or something? Will be. Yeah. Mm, not on my my uh, phone. Yeah. All right, I just pull up because some people are already be having it on their phone. Yeah, I but, got it on the phone, not the computer. Let me pull it up. All right, I got it. It's all good. So let's look what a jasper and a sardine stone look like. All right. <coughs> Y'all see what a jasper and a sardine stone look like? And it, look. We're going to use the white man hand for this one, right? Huh. Look at this. It don't line up at all. It don't line up <laughs> at all, right? <laughs> look what that Jasper and the Sardine stone color look like up against that white man hand. So this is what God looks like. That's right, brown. Or or how, how it would say, ruddy, right? Ruddy. That's what ruddy looks like. That's me like the one that they call red cows. Mm. The same color as some red cows, but they ain't even red like brown. It's ruddy. <laughs> they call them red cows. All right. So let's finish up the scripture. Revelation 4, verse 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Mm -hmm. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. All right. So ready, right? Or jasper and sardine stone, right? Let's prove. So like father, like son, right? Revelations 1 and 13, the son, right? Book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. So what he had, woolly hair that was white, right? Go ahead. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Uh huh. And his feet like unto fine brass. So his feet is like unto fine brass, right? Brass, right? Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. So brass is brown, but what is better than brass that's brown? Burnt brass, right? So it's black brown, right? Go ahead. And his voice has the sound of many waters. And he was loud as hell, right? Sounds like a black man to me, right? Definitely. Just a loud black man, right? People always tell me I'm talking loud. I don't even think I'm talking loud. Yeah. Um, also, like his people, right? Let's get his people. Um, Lamentations 4 and 8. So we got God, the Son, now, let's get into the people being black, right? Book of Lamentations, chapter 4, and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Their visage is blacker than a coal. It said their what? Their visage is blacker than a coal. What it says, vicious, their face is blacker than a coal. They black as hell, right? Go ahead. They are not known in the streets. Uh-huh. Their skin cleaveth to their bones. Uh-huh. They skinny as hell. <laughs> it is withered. It has become like a stick. All right. So, let's get into this. Moses, right? Because this is so crazy. Like, earlier... This morning, I got into it with some Jehovah Witnesses, right? I'm trying to get prepared because I have to do camp, man, and ain't no telling when camp is going to end, right? So I'm getting prepared, and I started, ended up arguing with some Jehovah Witnesses, right? And I'm saying Moses was black because they're giving me a pamphlet of this white Jesus. Oh, wow. So, right? So let's prove Moses is black, right? Let's get Exodus 2 and 16. Exodus chapter 2, verse 16. Now the priests of Midian mm -hmm. had seven daughters, and they came and drew water 
they filled the thoughts, the throws to water their father's flock. Uh -huh. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and but, helped them. But Moses stood up and helped them, right? Go ahead. And watered their flock. Mm -hmm. And when they came to Reuel, their father, he said, how is it that ye are come so soon today? So he asked him, he said, how did you get done so quick? Right? Go ahead. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds. They said, what? An Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds. Hold on. He said, an Egyptian delivered out of the hands. Hold on. But they were just saying it was Moses, right? Mm -hmm. But they called Moses an Egyptian, right? Yeah. So hold on. So Moses looked like the Egyptian. So we understand that the Egyptians are black, right? We're going to keep finish it off, right? An Egyptian delivered us out of the hands of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. Yeah, so Moses was out there saving them, right? Captain, <laughs> Captain <laughs> saving them, right? But let me get Exodus 4 and 6, right? One of the greatest things that, um, one of the greatest miracles of all time, right? Um, I remember they had the um the white Moses figure. It was like an old film. Old white man, yeah. And you know they never been hurt. Oh, yeah, where he never stick, you know, he never does this thing where he's supposed to Moses stick his hand oh, in the he his hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He never he does. He never James, does. Why? Because he's white. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna show it. Why? Because Moses was a black man, right? Exodus 4 and um 6. This is the book of Exodus chapter 4 and verse 6. And the Lord said, Furthermore, unto him. Put now thy hand into the into thy bosom. He says, Moses, put your hand into your bosom, right? Go ahead. And he put his hand into his bosom. Uh-huh. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous. Uh-huh. No. Lepers. As snow. It was white as snow. His hand turned white, right? Go ahead. Verse 7. And he said, Put thy hand onto thy bosom again. Mm -hmm. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. It turned back black. That's how it turned to his other flesh, right? I'm back and I'm black. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go, man. Go into it, brother. <laughs> I'm back and I'm black. So Moses looked like the Egyptian, right? Um, he do the miracle where he puts his hand in his own bosom. It comes out white. Put it back, it becomes black, right? One of the greatest miracles of all time, right? Proving that, what, the Jews of antiquity were black people. And it's going to show you, ain't no magically they turned white. No, all the way from Moses to Paul, right? <laughs> We're talking like a thousand years. They're, they're still calling these people saying they look like Egyptians, right? That's what we're going to get. Let's get Acts 21 and 37. So we get Mo Moses looking like an Egyptian and throughout all this time to Paul. Now, Moses is a Levite and the, Paul is a tribe of Benjamin. How the hell are these two tribes still looking like Egyptians, right? Go ahead. We're going to Acts 21 verse 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he mm -hmm. said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Mm -hmm. Who said, Canest, Canst thou speak Greek? He said, You can speak Greek. Right? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? He said, What? Art not thou that Egyptian? He said, Ain't you an Egyptian? Right? Go ahead. Which before these days made us an uproar uh -huh. and led us out into the wilderness, 4,000 men that were murderers. That was murderers, right? So Paul is the Egyptian, right? Like, what we need to do, man, let's figure out, like, because here go the coldest thing. If we can prove that these people of antiquity, we didn't. Like the Egyptians, right? Mm -hmm. Ham. They know Ham is black, right? Everybody know that. How the hell the Israelites ain't black if they look just like the Egyptians, which are Hamites? Those are verses they look over. It's just that simple. They look over those intentions. Like, this is crazy, right? Like, we finna go, we finna look up this stuff, right? Let's get it. Like, whenever we bring our Acts 13 and 1, where it clearly say nigger. <laughs> but you look into the word, it say black man. And you go to other translations, it says black man. Right. And they still will argue you down saying, it ain't saying that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, right? Like, like when I was getting into it with these Jehovah Witnesses earlier today, right? I, I simply asked them, I said, is Jesus the um the son of David? She said, no. <laughs> they literally, like, you, you, they're literally fighting against the word of God, and then she's going to say, no, nah, that's your interpretation. I'm like, he's literally the son of David. Because she's trying to tell me Jesus ain't got no color. He just some, he just some clear ass person who lived. He just didn't have any skin in the tongue, right? He's every color. Jesus is everybody. Jesus is... He's a rainbow. Jesus looked like a goddamn Asian. Like, no. Jesus was a black man. And you can't get past it, right? So we finna look up Ham, right? Somebody said, I hear that way too often. That's right. All of a sudden, when we understand that Jesus is a black man, now his color doesn't matter, right? 
That's weird how they do that. <laughs> they never say that until we say he's black. Until we say, you know, he's black. Oh, uh, well, color don't matter. We should test the theory one day. Go out there and be like, you know, Jesus is Asian to see if they say it. Yeah. They ain't gonna say it. <laughs> it's hey, real. <laughs> no, nah, man, all them goddamn um, Moab Moabites will be out there on the belt line. If we start saying it, Jesus is Asian, they'll be like, yeah, 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 right. So let's get it right. Let me share my screen. Right. This is Genesis, right? Genesis 10 and 6, right? And it says, The sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraya, put in the Canaan, in Canaan, right? Mm -hmm. So we understand that Ham, right? So we're going to go into it, right? We're going to look up Mizraya, right? Mizraya is where you get the Egyptians. So let's look at it. Mizraya, right? Mizraya. Right, Egypt, Egyptians, double strengths, right? The inhabitants of natives of Egypt. So the Egyptians, double strengths. That's what Mizraim means, double strength. Between literally a rock and a hard place. Yeah, that's what Egypt means, a rock and a hard place, right? <laughs> double strengths, right? So let's go back. That's where you get on um, Mizraim. Mizraim is the son of Ham, which is where you get the Egyptians from, right? So let's go back, right? Because here go to Colestine. We're going to look at his brother right next to Mizraim, right? We're going to look at his brother Cush, right? Because you got Mizraim and then you got Cush. We're going to look at Cush. These are where you get the um, Ethiopians, right? Cushites. Cushites, right? We're going to look at Cush, his brother. Black. <laughs> Cush, black. All right. So hold on, how you, you see what I'm saying? The Egyptians, the Kushites, these people are black. All these people are Kush black, right? So here goes the coldest thing, right? Like, you remember Joseph also got confused for an Egyptian, right? But here goes the thing is, he got confused for the Egyptians before we went into Egypt and started mixing amongst the Egyptians. That's the coldest thing, right? So get Genesis 42 and 5. He was called the Egyptian before he even went down there. Book of Genesis chapter 42, verse 5. Uh -huh. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came. Mm-hmm. For the famine was in the land of Canaan. So it was a famine in the land of Canaan or Israel, right? Go ahead. And Joseph was the governor over the land. But Joseph is the governor in Egypt at this time, right? Go ahead. And he, it was that sold to all the people of the land. And he's the one who's selling everything to the, everyone in the land, right? He's the one who's selling everything to the people in the land, right? Go ahead. And Joseph's brethren came uh -huh. and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Go ahead. And Joseph saw his brethren and he knew them. But made himself strange unto them and spake roughly unto them. Yeah, he, was he was talking shit to his brothers, right? Go ahead. <laughs> and he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. Uh huh. They came from Israel to buy food, right? Go ahead. And Joseph knew his brothers. He knew this was his brothers, right? Go ahead. But they knew not him. They didn't know it was him. Why? Because they think he's an Egyptian. He looks just like him, dress like him, talk like him, walk like him, must be one of them. He must be an Egyptian. So this is Joseph looking like an Egyptian. Or being confused for an Egyptian, even by the Israelites, or the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel, you know what I'm saying? Before they even went to Egypt. They was already looking like these people, right? That's so cold, right? So let's get um let's get to Songs of Solomon one and five, and then I'm gonna get to the video, right? I, I done did all this before the even video because I wanted people to understand these things before I actually pull up the video where Vladimir Putin is pulling out these Russian icons. Showing that we are the people. Uh, Songs of Solomon 1 and 5, right? And this is dealing with the northern kingdom, right? Because Joseph, Joseph is the um, progenitor of Man um, Manasseh and Ephraim. He was black, right? Go ahead. Look at Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 5. And this is dealing with the Israelite right, right, woman right here. Go ahead. I am black. She said what? I am black. She's letting them know I'm black, right? Go ahead. But come. But beautiful, right? Go ahead. 
O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Just like the daughters of the southern kingdom, right? Go ahead. As the tents of Kedar. Uh huh. As the curtains of Solomon. Look not upon me because I am black. She's black, right? Go ahead. Because the sun have looked upon me. Uh huh. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. And that's but, all. That's all I need, right? Finish it off, or that's it. But my own vineyard have I not kept. But my own vineyard have I not kept. So she's saying, what? She's black. Just like but that makes sense because all she's saying is that I worked in the field for so long outside of the sun that I got darker than what I'm normally out, which means who get dark when they go in the sun? Black hey, people. That's right. You can go almost brown and you go come back real black. I remember when I was in uh, Iowa State Prison, you get like 130 degrees in the shade out there. Good damn. And I, we was, I was out there for like two years in prison. And uh, like all my tattoos I got, I couldn't even see them. That's how black I was. Good like, Lord. It looked like I didn't have no tattoos. You got black as if I had a man, I got hella black. <laughs> oh my god, hey, my brother said he's black, <laughs> right? So let's get to our own video, right? Let's get to the video, right? Because this is crazy, man. These people know what's going on. Vladimir Putin, he's sitting up there telling us the truth, and we got to know this, right? So I'm finna share. Let's get into the video. Y'all understand the true Jews are black people, right? So let's share the video where Vladimir Putin, right? Get into the video, right? And then, um, what, what do, what do they be saying? Free use? Yeah, free yeah. use. Free use, free use, free use, right? This is us, our thoughts and comments of what's going on, right? This is our comments on the video, right? I get it from the Black Journal, right? They have 355, 100,000 subscribers, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big platform, right? And this video, they want to go into the Black Russian icons, right? Fair use, fair use. That's right. I'm saying free use, right? Fair use. Fair use. I'm tripping. Yeah, fair use, man. Fair use, right? Let's get into it, right? Have you ever seen or heard of biblical icons where Jesus or the Virgin Mary have dark skin, or even Abraham or King David? Then look beyond Europe. Russia has opened its vaults to reveal biblical icons featuring darker-skinned figures. In case this is making you wonder if Russia has its own twist on biblical figures, the answer is a no. This is not the case at all. This is, a matter of fact, as real as the untouched horizon. I think I'm going to start cutting carbs. I need to drop my belly fat. If you want to drop this. It's of time. These icons aren't just artistic anomalies. These hold deep meanings of hidden shaded truths, sparking serious curious questions about history and faith, representation, and the unexpected corners of religious art. Pay close attention, amazing people. You are just about to hear it today, like it is, in this video. Before we continue, Kindly endeavor to hit that like button as a way of supporting our works. Share with your families and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative and subscribe to stay put for more while you help in building the rising membership of this channel. We appreciate your support. First and foremost, let's start with the person of the most popular name in the world today. Jesus. Mark chapter 4 verse 22. For there is nothing hidden which shall not be manifested neither anything kept secret that would not be brought to light. For centuries, the most common image of Jesus Christ, at least in Western cultures, has been that of a bearded, fair-skinned man with long, wavy, light brown or blonde hair and often blue eyes. But the Bible doesn't describe Jesus physically, and all the evidence we do have today indicates that he probably looked very well different from how he has long been portrayed. The Good Book offers few clues about Christ's physical appearance. Most of what I just want to chime in. That's a goddamn lie. Yeah. What, what shows you they don't really know the Bible. This is strictly what? Educational, right? Because they're not basing this off of biblical belief that we have. They don't even know he, what he looks like in there. And that's a goddamn lie. It's a lie, but this shows you this is just strictly off the art and um, artifacts, right? Go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead. What we know about Jesus comes from the first four books of the New Testament, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. 
According to the Gospels, Jesus was a Jewish man born in Bethlehem and raised in the town of Nazareth in Galilee, formerly Palestine, now northern Israel, during the first century. We know that Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. So tells us the Bible book of Luke chapter 3 verses 23. But the Bible tells us virtually nothing about what he looked like, except that he didn't stand out in any particular way. The historical Jesus likely had the brown eyes and skin of other first century Jews. But that part they was actually right about. He didn't stand out in no particular reason. So just um, some stuff they actually write about, like um, like get Isaiah 53 and 2, right? This is the suffering servant, right? This is Jesus Christ not actually standing out in no particular way, right? 53 and 2. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 2. Uh-huh. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. So it's talking about Christ. He's going to grow up before the Lord as a tender plant, right? Go ahead. And as a root out of a dry ground. Go ahead. He have no form nor commonly. It says he have no form nor commonly, right? He's not beautiful or something like this, right? Go ahead. And we sh and when we shall see him, uh -huh. there is no beauty that we should desire. Right. So just get it out in the NLT. You read it out in the NLT for me. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 2 the NLT. My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green sh shoot, mm -hmm. like a root in dry ground. Mm -hmm. There was nothing beautiful or maj majestic about his appearance. Mm -hmm. Nothing to attract us to him. All right, so it's nothing that made him what stand out, right? That's what we were just talking about, right? But the thing is, on his second coming, he will stand out, all right? Let's get 2nd Ezra 2 and 42. He's going to stand out in his second coming, though. No, second address two and Book of Second Edges, chapter two, verse forty-two. Mm -hmm. I Edges saw upon the Mount Sinai a great people, uh -huh. whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. So Mount Zion, great people who could not number. Who is that? The children of Israel, right? Go ahead. And in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature. In the midst of them, there was a young man of high stature. Who is that? That's who the world calls Jesus Christ, right? Go ahead. Taller than all the rest. It was what? Taller. And all the rest. So when he come back, he's going to be taller than everybody, right? Go ahead. And upon every one of their heads, he said crown. And he's given every man his crown, right? What he says, I reward every man according to his works, right? So these people who did good, he's giving them a crown, right? Go ahead. And was more exalted. Uh huh. Which I marveled at greatly. He's marveled greatly, right? Go ahead. So I asked the angel and said, Sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. And put on the immortal mm -hmm. and have confessed the name of God. Now are they excuse me. <coughs> now are they crowned and receive psalms. And receive psalms, right? So what are they talking about? The ones, mm -hmm. the Israelites who got salvation, right? Go ahead. Verse 46. Then said I unto the angel, What young person is that crowneth them and giveth them psalms in their hands? Mm -hmm. So he answered and said unto me. It is the Son of God. He said what? It is the Son of God. It is the Son of God. This is Jesus Christ, right? Who the world he calls Jesus Christ, right? Go ahead. Whom they have confessed in the world. Uh-huh. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. All right. So he's going to stand out when he comes back, though, right? Yeah. What, what, what do women like the most? A tall black man. Hey. If he's the tallest of black men at that time, you know all the women are going to be talking. Hey, man. He's going to rule the world, too. <laughs> All right. Any path no go? Oh man. We ain't gonna love him. Hey, everybody's gonna love him. Salvation, right? Everybody loves a man that brings gifts. <laughs> Jews from Galilee, a region in biblical Israel. But no one knows exactly what Jesus looked like. There are no known images of Jesus from his lifetime. And while the Old Testament kings saw and this is the quickest way to clear out stuck poop. Fiber helps you poop, right? Nope. What about <laughs> good Lord? Oh, man. These commercials is out of hand.
are explicitly called tall and handsome in the Bible, there is little indication of Jesus' appearance in the Old or New Testaments. In addition, when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane before the crucifixion, Judas Iscariot had to point Jesus out to his soldiers among the disciples, presumably because they all appeared similar to one another. But the words of the Bible in itself did not hint on the reasons behind their similarities, whether they were white or black or... That's cold right there. He said they had to point them out because he had to look like it all together. So for them, now, now that in, once you think of it, it's a trick box now. Because if Jesus doesn't have no color, then you're saying the disciples ain't got no color either. No, it's beyond that. Look at this. The Romans is the ones that you got from. We all know the Romans are what? White, white. So if Jesus was this white man they were praying and he's standing in a group of niggas, so to say, yeah. they would have had to get pointed out. They already know. That's him right there. Yeah. So they had to get pointed out because he looked like the people who said. Therefore, you know what? They just clearly just told you it's a black man. This Period. black man. Period. 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 Why or how they looked too similar, it did not tell. Considering these events, one is made to actually wonder were these words deliberately expunged from the Bible to hide certain glaring truths, or did the writers of the good book of the gospel fail to discuss these things? However, the portrayal of Jesus as a white European man has come under renewed scrutiny during this period of introspection over the legacy of racism in society and over the actuality of truth. One of the major factors of this renewed scrutiny happens to come with the buzzing news concerning certain storming revelations from Russia. For some time now, the recentness of this event has got everyone talking in wonderment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has decided to move one of Russia's holiest icons from a museum to a Moscow cathedral. This arises a debate around Putin's growing reliance on the church. Emphasizing on the importance of the holy icon, Putin ordered Andrei Rublev's trinity be transferred to the Russian Orthodox Church from Moscow's Tretyakov Gallery for a year. The relocation of Russia's most well-known icon highlights how closely the war has intertwined politics and religion. The icon depicts the Oak of Mamre, where the three angels visited Abraham in the book of Genesis. Did you notice anything about these icons on display? They are all black. Icons dating back. And that's why I titled it Vladimir Putin proves the Negroes are the Jews. He just proved it. They know what the hell's going on. The elite, the people who run the world, the people who are out here that truly run stuff, they know all you black Hispanic Native Americans, y'all are the true Jews. They know it. They're playing a game with you. Back to the 14th century, brought together from private collections across Russia, rare and strongly challenging masterpieces most of which were destroyed during the Soviet era. It's very beautiful. It gives you goose pimples. It's a remarkable exhibition. It's an exhibition which feeds the senses. Everything is so gray outside at the moment. And here suddenly it's a feast for the eyes. These icons that you see are the survivors of what is left. Had the museums not saved them, they wouldn't be existing today. There used to be millions of these icons, but now only 50,000 of them are within sight. The unveiling of these icons is a powerful testament to the enduring strength of truth. The authenticity of these paintings compels us to re-evaluate our understanding of the past, particularly regarding the presence and representation of black figures. For centuries, these figures may have been shrouded in obscurity, but their rediscovery sheds... Yeah. 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 Black man with afro, right? <laughs> light on previously untold stories, standing as a challenge to long-held assumptions, prompting us to rewrite history with a more inclusive lens. Many Russian icons were destroyed or sold abroad by agents of the Soviet government. Some were hidden to avoid destruction or were smuggled out of the country. Since the fall of communism, numbers of icon painting studios have again opened and are painting in a variety of styles for the local and international market. Many older, hidden icons have also been retrieved from hiding or brought back from overseas. The Castile San Angelo in Rome is currently hosting an exhibition of 40 Russian icons that have left their country for the first time. They are pieces of art that were hidden after the October Revolution of 1917 in order to protect them from anti-religious destruction. Soprattutto la prima volta it's the first time that a large number of Russian icons have come here to Italy. In addition, here are a dozen examples that have never before been moved. They appear for the first time in our catalog. 
Icons are usually painted on wood and meant to represent saints or sacred elements. The Orthodox tradition considers them as if they were the gospel, inspirations of God through the hand of the artist. Their deep symbolism is reflected from the meaning of icon as a representation or vision from another world. The wood evokes the Holy Cross through its gold background, divine light, and the cloth attached to the wood evokes the cloth that covered the body of Jesus Christ. Without a doubt, they have a great importance and a fundamental recognition in Russia because the icons represent for Russia what the pyramids represent for Egypt or the temples to the Greeks. The exhibition show and that's a profound point. They said what the pyramids represent to Rus um to the Egyptians. It's like the same thing as icons represent to the Jews. It, 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 it's such a great point, man. Shows icons ranging from the 15th century until the early 20th century. It's a rare opportunity to see the religious soul of Russia through its There's been so much debate going on around the world of late, bestirred by the unveiling of these black biblical icons. Some tend to think that the icons had blackened over time due to age, while others say that the blackness of the icons has nothing to do with age but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted. Because they were black people, says Robert Rubin, why didn't their clothes change to black in those paintings or all of the paintings? The true Israelis were black-skinned people, not white, likewise the ancient Egyptians. The Rishat structure in Mauritania is also the location of Atlantis. Russians did not change their paintings just as other countries did. They simply kept the true paintings and iconography. Look up ancient maps and you will see that the Kingdom of Judah was later located in West Africa. The Jewish nation was destroyed by Titus. Millions of Jews fled into Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slave to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, it was because they, Israelis, did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses as we can see in the Bible book of Deuteronomy. God told them they will lose that land to people whom they did not know if they disobey him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Shem is because the children of Shem have mixed up with the children of Ham. They are both black-skinned. The prime target of this hate is actually the children of Shem. Shem is being punished for his disobedience to his God. Another insightful one from Johnson here says, Bro! They just went into it! He just said they are black! He said they went to the west coast of Africa. He just broke it all the way down! They don't know. They, they don't know. They know. Bro, like, we have to play this over again. They know, know what's going on. He, they're playing a game. That the icons had blackened over time due to age, while others say that the blackness of the icons has. Let me just see, man. Let me just look at the chat, man. Man, did y'all hear what he just said? Let me get a one in the chat, man. You just heard what the white man just said, man. <laughs> Devil broke it out. <laughs> like he he. <laughs> they oh, yeah, he broke it down, man. It's crazy. He said they went into West Africa. That means he knows who we are to a T. They know who we are to a T. He said the Shemites are the primary focus of the attacks. Not the Hamites. They know the separation. They know who the real Shemites are. Man, I see it in the chat, man. Chat, I'm going to play it one more time, right? They have always known but lied to keep us in sin. That's right. Play it again, man. It's crazy. He broke that all the way down, man. That's crazy. We're going to play it one more time. Nothing to do with age, but are a measure of accuracy meant to depict the actual color of the skins of the people painted. Because they were black people, says Robert Rubin. Why didn't their clothes change to black in those paintings or all of the paintings? The true Israelis were black-skinned people, not white, likewise the ancient Egyptians. The Rishat structure in Mauritania is also the location of Atlantis. Russians did not change their paintings just as other countries did. They simply kept the true paintings and iconography. Look up ancient maps and you will see that the Kingdom of Judah was later located in West Africa. The Jewish nation was destroyed by Titus. Millions of Jews fled into Africa. They ended up in the west of Africa. From there, they were sold as slave to almost every part of the world. Do you think the hatred for black people is just normal or a coincidence? No, 
It was because they, Israelis, did not keep the commandments of God. Moses informed them of the blessings and curses as we can see in the Bible book of Deuteronomy. God told them they will lose that land to people whom they did not know if they disobey him. The hatred for the black children of Ham and Shem is because the children of Shem have mixed up with the children of Ham. They are both black-skinned. The prime target of this hate is actually the children of Shem. Shem is being punished for his disobedience to his God. Another insightful one from Johnson here says, Because black people were the people in the Bible that the Americans turned white when they told the stories to us. But Russians didn't get the memo, they went off for real history. Songs of Solomon. Chapter 1 verse 5. Revelations chapter 1. Same white man said, Russians didn't get the memo when white people started lying to black people over here. They kept it the same. <laughs> Bro! <laughs> Oh my verse 15 God. go check it out it's in the text it's not because of a candle or anything else these people are talking about in that case the whole picture would be black not just the face and the hands they are meant to be black because they were black people this great usa is also a great deceiver and so many people inherit the wrong lesson from their great grandparents and their parents to the point where it's so deep that the lie is made true when the real answer is really just right there but you never look because why would you the Russian unveilings didn't stop there. Russia continues with its biblical historical revelations with President Putin at the foremost front, championing the course. Russia has opened its cellars to reveal remarkable paintings of Jesus dating back to the 1400s. By Father Vladimir Ivanov. This is a book that is highly coveted by different circles it, because it has the black icons. It has the um, history of black people in places like Russia and um, Italy in places all over Europe. This book can range from $1,300 to $3,000. So it's not an easy book to get. I actually borrowed this book from a friend, you know, but this book has a lot of um, interesting depictions in it. A lot of them pertaining to the, to the Bible. Like right here, this is the transfiguration of Christ. And you see it's, it's black people in caves, I believe, what it looks like. It's black people in the whole picture. But this is um, knowledge that escapes black people here in America. Um, it's definitely something that we would never see or never hear about in the educational system. Now, I'm pretty sure there's people that are um, black history uh, college students majoring in black history or world history, and they've never seen nothing like this before. At least not from the standpoint of Europe, you know. This is the... There's one simple vision hack anyone can use to improve vision, so you can say goodbye to your opt. No, nah, but we can see, man, the laws are being un un unfolded, man. We, we understand all these lies are starting to starting to be revealed, man. This is crazy, man. Let's keep. Believe, they didn't believe us, they'll believe them. No, that's true. And in it, we see um, angels, black angels. Um, the people surrounding him are black. Um, it's very interesting because the images that we see are contrary to what we have known our whole lives or what we have been taught our whole lives. Like I, I said again, like these type of images of antiquity escape black people here in America. And I can say all people for in general, just people in general don't know. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of Caucasian people and people of all nationalities that don't know the extent that black people covered the earth. And in many cases, 
like here, like what you see, uh, we're in rulership position. Like this looks like a, a king. The images of Jesus and other historical figures in Russia's black icons challenge the commonly known perception of antiquity and reveal the extent of black people's presence and influence throughout history. Paintings from the 1500s and 1600s depicting black icons, including Jesus and Mary, in a highly sought-after book that explores the history of black people in Russia, Italy, and other parts of Europe. The book contains interesting depictions of black people in biblical scenes, which is knowledge that is not taught in the American educational system. However, debates concerning the authenticity of these icons goes on. And Alex Pismeni, a software developer and Catholic Christian, has some things to contribute. The Russian Christians adopted Byzantine orthodoxy wholesale. That, of course, includes the iconography. The fundamental principle of orthodox iconography is no changes. The icons are as much as possible portraits of Christ, Our Lady, and other saints. Further, the styling, mood, garments, gestures are all fixed in the Byzantine style, so much so that students of iconography refer to these rules as iconographical canon. So when he's talking about the Byzantine Empire, that's in the times. So he's saying it's paintings is specifically made in that to show basically the time period shows that this art is made like this. The way their clothes is and all this. So ain't no messing with their facial features. It ain't it's just supposed to it's supposed to be depicted like this because this is what these people look like. This is what he's saying. Even though very little of that canon ever went through the normal ecclesial legislative process involving episcopacy and councils. Going forward, while Russia continues to amaze the world in this light, the unquenchable fire of truth persists through the darkness of history. Not so long, protesters had called for the removal of Confederate statues in the US. Activist Sean King went further, suggesting that murals and artwork depicting white Jesus should come down. His and he's absolutely right. White Jesus should come down. White Jesus should come down because it's, it's in our law, right? It's in our law, white Jesus should come down, right? Let me get Deuteronomy um 12 and 2, all right? We're going to get a couple of scriptures. Deuteronomy 12 and 2, right? Deuteronomy 12, verse 2. Uh-huh. Ye shall utterly destroy all the places wherein the nations which ye shall possess serve their God. Uh-huh. So their God is this white Jesus. We should destroy it, right? Go ahead. Upon the high mountains. And upon the hills and under every green tree. Mm -hmm. And you shall overthrow their altars uh -huh. and break their pillars. We got to overthrow these things and break it, right? Go ahead. And burn their groves with fire. And we should burn these things, right? Go ahead. And ye shall hew down the graven images of their gods uh -huh. and destroy the names of them out of that place. Yeah, so this person, Cesare Bozier, man, he's got to be utterly destroyed out of this place, man. <laughs> right? Um, let me get Exodus 34 and 12, right? But here they actually pass laws and stuff. You want to get that there? Oh, yeah. He told us to do that, right? Exodus 34 and 12. Book of Exodus chapter 34, verse 12. Uh huh. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where thou goest. Mm -hmm. Lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Because that white Jesus is a snare in the midst of our people, right? Go ahead. Verse 13. But he but ye shall destroy their altars, mm -hmm. break their images, uh -huh. and cut down their groves. Go ahead. For thou shalt worship no other god. And that's because we don't need to worship no white Jesus. That's another god, right? Go ahead. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, uh -huh. is a jealous god. And that's what's happened. He's a jealous god. That's why he said destroy all these things. And I I adhere to my god. All right, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, read 15. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. And that's the problem. Our people make a covenant with these people, right? Go ahead. And they go a whoring after their God. And our people will go a whoring after this white Jesus, right? Go ahead. And do sacrifices unto their God. And what is that sacrifice they like to do under this white Jesus called Christmas, right? Go ahead. And one call thee, uh -huh. and thou eat of his sacrifice. And I'll go over there and they go eat, celebrate Christmas. That's why I want to destroy all these things, right? Because our people like going over there and eating Christmas, man. So, yeah, I agree. And we should destroy these things. Imagine our mom just go over and kick our whole turkey off the table. <laughs> oh, yeah. White oh, Jesus man. coming down. Nah, man. Yeah. That's, what, that's, what's, that's what's going on. Also, man, 
also, man, um, because he said, like, it's it's a simple stuff, like, um, uh, give me on um, what's your name? Shoot, give me first Maccabee three and forty eight, right? Because this is how white Jesus come into play in this first place, right? Book of First Maccabees, chapter three, verse forty eight. Uh huh. And laid open the book of the law. And that's what they do. They open our Bible up, right? Go ahead. Wherein the heathen have sought to paint the likeness of their image. Because they started painting white Jesus. Now Jesus is white. Now Paul is white. Now Peter is white. Now Abraham is white, right? This is why you get all these images of these white people all over the earth, right? It's right here in the Bible. It's this man named Pope Alexander VI. This white Jesus right here is an actual person. His name is Cesare Bogier, right? The Bogiers. So, yeah, this stuff should be destroyed, right? All right, we're going to go ahead and finish this up. His concerns about the depiction of Christ and how it is used to uphold notions of white supremacy are not isolated. Prominent scholars and the Archbishop of Canterbury have called to reconsider Jesus' portrayal as a white man. Drinking coffee every day didn't work for man. Only recently, on June 22, 2020, writer and activist Sean King announced that he supports the destruction of statues that depict a white Jesus. King, who had tweeted his remarks on that memorable Monday of 2022 June, noted that historians believe Jesus likely had the appearance of people who typically lived in the Middle East during his time, rather than the white man who is often depicted in Christian iconography. Yes, I think the statues of the white European they claim is Jesus should also come down, King tweeted. They are a form of white supremacy, always have been. In the Bible, when the family of Jesus wanted to hide and blend in, guess where they went? Egypt, not Denmark, he added. Tear them down. The comments quickly drew condemnation from some on the platform, including several prominent conservative figures. King clarified that he was only advocating that statues of a white Jesus be torn down in response to a tweet from the account of PragerU, a non-profit co-founded by conservative talk show host Dennis Prager. He also remarked that stained glass windows and other images of a white Jesus, his white mother and their white friends, should all be destroyed, insisting they are racist propaganda and a gross form of white supremacy. King shared an image of a darker-skinned Jesus that appeared in a 2002 Popular Mechanics article, which scholars believe may be more accurate than those showing Jesus as a European. He commented that the image would have been intolerable for white Americans who participated in slavery. Experts have long since said that this is likely the most accurate depiction of Jesus. White Americans who bought, sold, traded, raped and worked Africans to death for hundreds of years in this country simply could not have this man at the center of their faith. Sean King further tweets, June 23, 2020, a day after he had tweeted his support for the destruction of all white statued Jesus. A tweet by Jenna Ellis, a lawyer representing President Donald Trump, warned that she would not break if they try to cancel Christianity, although it's unclear if it was in direct response to King's tweet. Regardless, King responded that what the lawyer was actually defending here is her whiteness. Christian whiteness needs white Jesus, King tweeted to Ellis. It's not about generosity or kindness. It's not about protecting the vulnerable. It's about whiteness itself. Attack white Jesus to her, and you attack her faith. Statues have been... And that's true. Christians need white Jesus for it to work. You attack the white Jesus, you attack their faith. Torn down and destroyed amid ongoing protests against racial injustice and police brutality that have swept the nation these recent years counting from 2020. Although statues and monuments paying tribute to the Confederacy have been primarily targeted, statues of other figures from early American history have also been taken down. The movement to take down and deface controversial statues has gained traction in the UK, as well as Europe and the US, but has divided public opinion, with critics slamming it as mob rule, while others applaud it as a way of addressing systemic racism. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury and head of the Church of England, has said the church should reconsider its portrayal of Jesus as a white man. Speaking to the BBC Today programme, Welby was asked whether the way the Western Church portrays Jesus needed to be thought about again and reimagined. Yes, of course it does, he said, adding that Jesus was portrayed differently in countries around the world. He was regularly in touch with Anglican church leaders from around the world, he said, who did not portray Jesus as white.
You go into their churches and you don't see a white Jesus. You see a black Jesus or Chinese Jesus or a Middle Eastern Jesus, which is, of course, the most accurate. Well be added that the representations of Jesus were not, however, who we worship, but rather served as a reminder of the universality of God who became fully human. Addressing calls for monuments with links to the UK's imperialist history and slave trade to be removed, he said statues in Canterbury Cathedral would be put under review. The question about whether they should all be there arises, of course it does, and we've seen that all over the world, he continued. We're going to be looking very carefully and putting them in context and seeing if they all should be there, says Justin Welby. In closing, the unveiling of these black icons serves as a powerful reminder that history is often shrouded in darkness, but truth has a way of shining through. These artifacts compel us to re-examine our understanding of the past and challenge long-held narratives. If their authenticity is confirmed, the paintings offer a glimpse into a previously unknown facet of history, forcing us to confront the complexities of representation. This discovery stands as a testament to the enduring power of truth, shattering the towers of misinformation and prompting a re-evaluation of the stories we tell ourselves about the past. That brings us to the end of yet another video segment. Share your thoughts with us in... All right, with that, man, you gotta give the most high hand for that, right? Goddamn devil's lies are coming out, man. Goddamn devil's lies are coming out. Man. man I'll take a couple questions, man, before we go ahead and end this class. That's right, man. Goddamn devil's lies are coming out. So anybody got any questions, man? Just go ahead. I'll take a couple minutes for questions. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. You got something you want to say? You want to say something? No, I was just thinking about it. They had to kind of uh, change the imagery of Christ and everybody else because if they didn't, if the world still knew and believed and accepted the fact that Christ was a black man, it would have been just that much harder for them to take us into captivity and do what they did without the world bringing an uproar about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But by them making him a white man, they're like, oh, God is just doing what God's do. Stepping on peasants and acts. So there wasn't no big. It works. No, it do because it's hard to enslave. It's hard to enslave God's chosen people if he's looking like the image y'all are doing it for. Like, yeah, it's hard to enslave black people if we're doing it in the name of this black man. It doesn't make sense. So, of course, we're going to change him white. So once we do it, it'll be in the name of this white man. And I can be uh, uh, venerating myself in any, like, problems with this. Like, oh, man, it's just savages, like, you know what I'm saying? And if I got a question, what the question is that? Man, they ain't got nothing to say. My thought, ideas, what you got to say? What y'all think? Yeah, uh, y'all got any thoughts, ideas? It's called Black Journals. They do, like, all types of stuff, man. It should be going into Black History. Well, Israelite history. Well, that <laughs> No, because what's so crazy is, like, look. Like, in four days... It says in four days, 486,000 people saw that video. Meaning it's a whole bunch of people who want to probably make them research. Like, dang, what is that talking about? And what if that does? It funnels them straight to us. Eventually. Yes, eventually. It's going to be a high influx of people coming to the city. The closer we get to that day. Let's see the girls come out. Somebody. If they can show what we did and everybody start running. <laughs> Somebody said, um, how does it benefit Russia and Putin to admit that we to admit that we're the people? I guess you meant to say we are the people. Um, is it to get our support for war? I don't give a goddamn what he I don't give a damn why he did it. <laughs> Russia always been like that. They never changed the book since the of Russia invaded. You see, they said they never changed the book, they just stayed with the school, period. They got no agenda behind it, it's just that's what it is. Yeah. And now, you know, since the whole world has conformed to this lie. And they didn't. It just makes it seem like they exposed someone. They're just doing what they naturally do anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, he just answered it for you, King.
got to think about it, what the Bible say. In the end, after America is destroyed and we're in our land, what's who gonna be the people to try to come get us again? Mm -hmm. So even if they know we are the people, they still gonna try to do and go against Christ in the end. Yeah, we're gonna do it to them. We're gonna serve they guys. Yeah, I'm say, we're gonna do it to them. So don't believe the devil. <laughs> the devil, the devil period. We'll do it to them. Somebody said, what's the name of the video? Um, it says the name of the video is from Black Journals. Russia opened its vaults to reveal black biblical Israelites. So the name of the video is Russia opens its vaults to reveal black biblical Israelites. That and Russia don't like America anyway. So anything that's getting one up on them, they're going to go for it. Mm. Somebody say, I'm. Um, Debak, I'm glad you give us soul food every Saturday. Well, it be, if, it, if it be the Lord's will. <laughs> Next Saturday, I ain't doing it. You gonna have um leftover cereal or something? Nah, <laughs> man. Y'all gonna have an even better soul food Saturday. Um, y'all get oh yeah, they, they, yeah, they get um, you get gorilla, gorilla they Hebrew. Go, they get the rest of my basement. Yeah, you get the you get That's the you get gorilla Hebrew and Deacon Hakai. So. And aside, yeah. What's a good soul food restaurant? In Atlanta? Period. I don't think it's Well, I don't know. Speaking of soul food, man, man, I gotta go. Um, <laughs> Y'all ain't got no questions, man. Hey, with that. Let me give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Yahweh Shai. And Shalom on, people. Shalom on, fam. Yeah. Yeah. The bark I was. Yeah. Yeah. And this is Kingdom Music. Kingdom Music. Clip full of scripts about to shoot through ya. And we see through ya. Weak ass theories, we blow cold through ya. And this is Kingdom Music. Kingdom Music. Clip full of scripts about to shoot through ya. And we see through ya, weak ass theories, we blow holes through ya. My God, I know he's real. Grew up in the hood that felt like Cloverfield. Had to fight like I'm holy filled. Deuteronomy 28, I know how curses feel. Yeah, we grind till the curse fulfilled. What heaven on my mind head made it still. Which means I'm hard-headed yeah. And to the Lord of hosts, you the one I'm indebted I give all credit to the most high, most high. And they can catch static and that's no lie, no lie. So play your horns and trumpets when I walk by Cause that's what you do when you see God, see God. Hey. This is Kingdom Music. Kingdom Music Clip full of scripts, about to shoot through ya King. And we see through ya We gas theories, we blow holes through ya this is Kingdom Music, Kingdom Music. Clip full of scripts, about to shoot through ya. Yeah. And we see through ya. Weak ass theories, we blow holes through ya. 
the promised land inside inside glory to the father for the insight had to put in work still gotta earn my strike so i'm running like a skater on a half pipe put your head on the spike cut you with the word with my ancestors yelling damn what you heard digging through a history of what ain't learned and it came back i'm judah and that's by sperm so we children of the promise never think a slave master information honest the one that better crown left the world astonished so blow the horns and trumpets let them know that we coming let them know that we coming we coming hey this is kingdom music kingdom music clip full of scripts about to shoot through you and we see through you we cast theories we blow holes through you this is kingdom music clip full of scripts about to shoot through you we see through you, yeah. we cast theories, we blow holes through you. What side will you be on when he pleased with all flesh, kings of PRs? The heathen think we just niggas rapping on a song. When we the ones to put them in chains where they belong, it's been way too long. Now the earth is a disgrace. Look at Esau's face when your hour come out his place. I'm a god. ASAP said it, it's no facade. The moon turn to blood, I promise it's no mirage. I'm at large, playing the corners, pushing the word, telling one third. Christianity's absurd. When that sky crack, niggas look up. Is it a plane or a bird? It's the Lord and these horns is all you heard. Hey, this is Kingdom Music. Clip full of scripts, about to shoot through you. And we see through you. We cast theories, we blow holes through you. This is Kingdom Music. Clip full of scripts, about to shoot through you. And we see through you. We cast theories, we blow holes through you.